and your life. Welcome to Islam in Action Team with me, Mohammed Solomon. And myself, Simon Marciniak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum brothers and welcome once again to our part of our program of Islam in Action TV. Good morning, Mandy Productions in the house. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Brothers and sisters, we um, thank you for your presence once again. Um, but tell you, don't go anywhere, do not switch off, stay tuned because we've got another hour. Well, no, not even an hour. We've got some, a good, good, good amount of time. It'll feel like an hour when you finish with we it. We probably will do, yeah. Of some information to give to you that we know is going to be vital for your self development by the grace of our and Tala. As you know, with Islam Action, we are adherents to the philosophy of the Ahlul Bayt, which we know at this particular moment, and we know about the, the sacrifice of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. We know we're in the month of Muharram, and it is a Shura, and Muslims all over the world, human beings all over the world, are recognizing the sacrifice of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. The one that gave his life to show the difference between hak and battle. A sacrifice that is for all of humanity, not just for Muslims, not just for Shias, not just for Sunnis, not for any particular race or group, but for all of humanity. So, we're going to be touching on Muharram, because if you remember, we did a, uh, a talk on Muharram uh, last time, didn't we? Looking at um, how the message has been diluted somewhat, and the true essence of what Mam Hussein's sacrifice has been slightly dampened down. Um, but we want to pick up on the last... Um, video that we did about a year ago now the mysticism the, yes the, mysticism. <laughs> the money the money the money, the money, yeah, the, money is the mayhem touching that a little bit and take it forward take it forward a bit more is that right mr m that's the spirit of it yeah mashallah mashallah so let's let's, let's start chopping this up now um now last time we we, we spoke about um the kind of uh, merchandising as it were as it were of of, of maharam mm. we looked at um how it's kind of you know, um, it, it kind of got away from what the real message was. What would you say is the real message of Muharram? Gosh, the real message of Muharram, well, what we hear every year is that it's all about justice, fighting oppression, um, fighting for what's right, right against wrong, enjoying the good, forbidding the evil, mm. which is perfectly correct, that's, mm. that's what it's about. Um, but there's, there's various layers to it, I would say. Mm. So, um, if you look at the way that the story unfolds, um, you have to ask yourself a number of questions, things that aren't sort of explicit from that narrative, but which you have to pull out. So, for example, um, when they're proceeding to Kerbala, mm -hmm. the, you know, we know that the companions drift off, they start with a few hundred, and then it drifts off and ripples down and whittles down until it ends on the Bear Kerb, on the Bear Ashura with 72. And um, you, 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 you ask yourself the question, well, how, what happened from, from the point where he, um, Imam was in his Mecca yes, no. and, until that point? Yes. Um, now he says Muslim bin Akil to Kufa mm -hmm. to try and rally support for the Imam. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, no. And he's um, basically no. beheaded by his breath, thrown from the, from the parapet and his body is disposed of. Um, and, and it's even Yazad is able to um, uh, gain the support. Thirty thousand short soldiers eventually um, defeat the army on, on the day of Ashura. Mm -hmm. So, um, what you have to ask yourself the question of is why, if if, if if this was the Imam or the the ruler as we understand him, why was he not able? To rally enough support. That's correct. Yeah. To, why? To, why to, was to, to overthrow the to overthrow the um, the ruler at the time? Mm -hmm. Could he not have said to the people of Kufa or whatever, "I'm the ruler. This is my fatwa. So you're going to join on the field of Kerbala, or are you going to hell?" Mm -hmm. But that never happened. Yes, we're, we're never told that that happened. Mm -hmm. But that was, of course, the um, philosophy of the Umayyads at the time. That was their sort of gambit. They would threaten people. Will behead you. You'll go to hell. Will dispossess you. Right. So that's that's another Yeah. So, and of course, you can ask the question. Well, didn't he? Didn't Imam Hussein owe it to so. the seventy-two that lay that lay behind to issue some sort of fatwa well, to or to say to other people, look, yeah, you need to join us. You must join us. It's your obligation. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your fellow Muslims will die. Mm -hmm. But none of that ever happens. So you left yourself asking the question. Were they fighting for some sort of ideal, some sort of um, principle that um, there is no compulsory religion? Islam is not based on fear, coercion, mm. 
people telling you what to do. So if you don't put your right foot into the mesh, when you go in, you'll go to hell. If you yeah. don't have your clothes a certain length or the beard a certain length, if you don't wear your hat on the toilet, shirt tells are going to pinch your bottom. Yeah. So there's all sorts. The there's all sorts of this. There's this narrowing of the religion, which the Omeyyads started, mm. and which of course goes on today. Because of course you're told now, you know, religion is too difficult for you. You need mm -hmm. to get guidance from a sheikh or a scholar. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you try and follow the things you said, you turn out to be You mean? Yeah. So you, you, you're useless. You're helpless. Yeah. So, so you don't think for yourself. You just like it's yeah. automaton. Forget the fact that the Quran says we've made this religion easy for you. Correct. Yeah. Now it's, now it's flipped over, it's now difficult for us. <laughs> yeah. So we have to have it mediated through the, through the shape. So it's almost scholars. like a priesthood thing, like... Yeah. It's almost like the Catholic Church have this, you know, between God and man. This, this so this, this constriction of the channels of religion, which was started by the Umaids, with the coercive mentality mm -hmm. in Islam, that's what, in my view, Imam Hussein was fighting against. So, so, you, so you, that's controversial, and you're almost in a way... He had been an antithesis to the clergy that we have now, to the very that kind of priesthood type clergy yeah. system. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, of course, there are things that are right and wrong in Islam. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know what they are. Mm -hmm. But this, this, you say that, this is valid in Islam, though. Sorry, it's a problem wrong. Like they can't. I don't say anything wrong with Islam. I see things wrong with Muslims. No, what well, Islam is there, are, there are things that are right and wrong in Islam. Things we can do, we can't do. I'm not saying that. Oh, that, that, oh, oh that so you mean, yeah, yeah. You mean like, which is so, so what we're talking around. about is okay. the, the constrictions of the religion, mm -hmm. the, the, the hadithology, if you like, yes. what, what we told we can and can't do, uh, and supererogatory to, to the injunctions we're certain about. Um, well, that, that, that sounds a lot clearer than as to what Imam was saying that I was fighting for, because then that, I think it's very important we have to understand this. I think when there was, you know, um, I, the, you know, there the, was a recent radio show that I was listening to, and um, I believe it was uh, Tony Broder, Anthony Broder, could have been one of these black nationalist um, historians, and he kept on talking about the Arab, the Arab god Allah. You know, the Arabs create this god called Allah, and Arab, and the god is uh, the god of Arabs is Allah. And somebody phoned in and said, "You have to stop being so infantile and ridiculous." Allah is not the name of any Arab God. It's not defined by a race or a group of people. It's not defined by a religion. You such a brother Poli, don't you? No, Poli, yeah. You know, Allah. <laughs> and Allah. How, how Allah, yeah. Allah is derived from Allah. Well, and and if you're watching this, we're coming for you, Paul. Like, we're coming for you. Trust <laughs> me, we're coming for you. But you're right, see? But this is the point. Is There is no name that, to the but, creator. But, he, this but is he has a point. I think brother Poli has a point mm -hmm. in the sense that he's picked on one of these sort of the um, narrowing... You know, this, this is my point. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, that's exactly. And this is what I'm trying to say is that although his conclusions are wrong, he's wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, I, I he, took, he, he's got a point in one sense. Yeah, this is the point. Is that uh, what I'm trying to say is that the, the, the call actually said that you know the the creator of the heavens and the earth and the the, the, the moons and the stars, the the Milky Way, the galaxies, whatever you want to call it, it, it's not defined by a race. It's that exists whether you like it or not. So I think Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was on that level where he's fighting for a principle that's not defined by just a Muslim or a Buddhist or whatever. It's defined by humanity, isn't it? It's a, a yeah. pure message of between you and your creator, there is no intermediary apart from you and yourself. You understand? You don't need this intermediary. You don't need the narrowing of Islam and such. Because we always say this, if there, was, if there were no humans on the planet, Islam is here. Because the birds are here, the, the moon is here, the stars. Everything's in existence without humans sitting down and deciding, okay, well, Islam is this and is that. Yeah. It's not limited to our. So you don't need people to do your Islam. No, you, for you. exactly. No, you which, don't. Which is what, which is how it's how it's presented. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. People within our schools. Well, yeah. Well, that's probably why people do apostate to something. I'm not excusing what they do, but when you limit Islam to time, for example, or to space, or to matter, or to philosophy, you're you're limiting it. If you limit it to feminism, if you limit it to nationalism, you're limiting. You're narrowing it as you're narrowing the field. Islam is. All of those things and more in terms of the fact that it is beyond that in ability to encompass it. Mm. You understand? So, so Allah knows our future, He knows our past, our present. So when He, when he defines Islam, it's within that context. So you see, Muhammad said Islam came, came along and, um, you know, and fought and died so we can have this, um, you know, this, 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 this openness and not this constriction of the deen. Mm. And it's interesting because, you know, when we, when we um, go through a show where, and we follow social media, it's one thing after another, one post after another, people getting on their soapbox saying this and that and posting this and that, mm. people hitting themselves, people <laughs> slashing themselves. <laughs> I mean, I, I was showing one post today where people go into the home wearing a 
carrying a fag wooden stuff. Four by four. Start, 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 start waving it about. You know, and people are rightly critical of that. But then you start to wonder, is, is this part of the power politics? Does this allow people to get on the high horse and say, yeah, this is wrong, that and that's wrong? So you have these bizarre practices, um, but you have, it, it just, um, all it does is maintain the status quo. You have people arguing for and against it in order to make themselves look good. I, I think, I think, the, I think that's a very excellent point, because we, obviously last year we looked at the merchandising of it. We looked at how you know this this tier merch this tier industry. Of, if you don't go to a, a majlis in a, in, in, a, in Maharam and, and a show, if you're not crying, then you might as well have chopped off the head of one hundred seventy-two. Or uh, you know that the whole point of it is this um, auto response. You know that we're gonna start turning the lights down mm. and we're gonna start um, you know like and then we're gonna start putting the echo on the voice and then we're gonna start crying in the room, isn't it? But it's part of so, that fear culture, isn't it? If if you don't do what we do, you're not one of us. Yeah, if you, if you, you go against it, something wrong with you if you go against it. Yeah, that is, yeah. It's, it's about fear. But what it's, a, it's it's exactly the same thing that Yazid was employing, as you said, against the man was saying, and now the followers of of the man was saying, so called followers, they're now employing it against their followers. So that's yeah. that's the hypocrisy of it. You know, we recently saw Nasrullah um, from uh, his Balah, his uh, Balah said his Balah here yeah. uh, on his Balah um, TV, actually saying that. You know, these cough pe you know, where did it come from, these ideas that, you know, you're going to parade a coughing through the, through the masjid with a blue, with a green turban on, and everyone's going to start crying over the turban, or a man's going to dress in a onesie uh, and, as a lion, and he's start, you know, showing his bare, his bare behind and climbing on this coffin and crying over the coffin, or you're going to talk about um, Bibi Zainab, Islam Alayhi, coming out of the tent, you know, like, no hijab, showing her hair. For, you know, against the Quranic injunction, which is women of the Ahlul Bayt, not to show, uh, not to show, you know, not to show yourself to be covered at all times. So, um, one thing I'd like to ask the people who do, uh, you know, does, as a side point, people who do have the case striking and hitting at the head, mm. is how how are women supposed to do it? If they're supposed to remain covered up, it doesn't relate to women. So does it? Doesn't relate to women. There's always, there's always well, is that right? There's always, always said it's not related, it's always, there's always there's always some excuse for oh they don't need they don't need to be there, isn't it? Or um, their, their jihad is staying at home baking the cooking the cookies with some oven gloves on or some you know you know some rubber gloves on some day uh, gloves whatever it is. So, I think so this is the only son, this is the only son in history that's sexually discriminatory. <laughs> of course, it's because interesting. yeah, even though Baby Zainab told us all about it because it wasn't for her at least that we wouldn't have known about it because she was carted through the streets of Damascus like a horse or a mule or a chicken yeah. and um, if it wasn't for her we wouldn't have known about it. So it's once again we can see um, if, if Nazrullah has now sided with us. We believe that we have been totally vindicated when we said that a year ago. A year ago we were seen as braggadocious, we were seen as argumentative, stirring up trouble, fringe. causing trouble, a fringe view that um, Maharam had gone, had uh, descended into madness, had descended into chaos, had descended into an industry. We were seen as, um, you know, oh gosh, these, these soothsayers are causing these problems. Reverse, these these reverse, yeah. Who are they? They have no Ijaza. They have no respect. Exactly. In, you know, inside the fifth column. As, 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 as yeah, said in, in as the as said, top. yeah, he's in top. Just the fifth, fifth column. Columnist. The fifth column is. But now you have heavyweights like Nazrullah. Nazrullah, heavyweight uh, shape, right? With all the Ijaz you want to give him. Sayyid. He's coming out. Sayyid coming out and agree with what we're saying. All the chat, you look at all of these chats and all the bus feeds everywhere. Muslims in this country, whether it's in the Kodja community, the Iranian community, the Arab community, they're all now in line with what we're saying. That it's lost its path. The message has been diluted. That no, they don't want to be crying anymore, no more. They want to be commiserating Imam Hussein as, you know, as some matter complex. They want to be actually commemorating him in a positive way. Showing that this is, what he did was a great sacrifice for all of mankind. You know, so... It's that young people and the youth now are turning against these people. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that, in a way now, people are beginning to see what we said a year ago? Well, look, I mean, people just have to use their common sense, don't they? Um, and reach their own conclusions based on their own life experiences. People don't want to be cocooned anymore. They want to be shut up in their, in their homes. We all experience life. They want to travel. They want to see things. It's true, yeah, the internet. They want to see the world. Open the world up to people. Yeah. Um, Social media. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's the thing about Kerbalu, isn't it? I mean, Zainab wouldn't have been exposed to the battlefield before she went on that journey. She wouldn't have seen people having their arms chopped off, their heads locked off. But I think the man was saying was prepared to expose his own family to those sites and, and all the psychological trauma that went with it. Yes. In order to um, strengthen her, strengthen those people. Because what did she go and do? She went to 
make a speech at Yazid's oh, palace. Amazing. Yeah, she did. Yeah, so she, 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 she lived through that. that she lived through that, and 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 went and progressed to that. You know, raised the status. I think it's so right so, because um, you know. So you know, people just need to get out of the comfort zones, get out of the cocoons, see what they're you know, build their identities and see where they're coming from. I totally agree with you on that one. I think. You do need these examples, and it has to be an extreme example that you just said. Like, how are we going to know what our, the strength of a woman, the caliber of a woman, the articulate abilities of Baby Zero, if that traumatic event had not occurred? How do we know, uh, you know, if you're going to build a house, unless you put uh, that the, the scaffolding is strong, that, that wood that's holding up the four corners is the right um, strength to hold the house, unless you put the pressure on the house. That's right. And then you know it. So, when other goes, I removed the blemishes from the woman of the Ahlul Bayt, from the Ahlul Bayt and I purified them, this is what he was talking about. If you read the Quran and you read her speech and you experience what she went through, you would say, my gosh, this woman is of what Allah's talking about. You know, she's not like some of the wives who Allah's admonished in the Quran who says, um, you know what I mean, if you plot against the Prophet, I will protect him, the angels will protect him and the believers. He said that about the wives because to show that they didn't necessarily have that caliber. But look at the kind of Bibi Zainab, I mean, Bibi Zainab. And the trust in Allah, Allah. Zainab, Zainab. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, so, we just need to get as close as we can to those relationships. Relationship with Mama Zainab is essential to with his family. Subhanallah. We're not near it yet as a community, nowhere near it. Exactly. But that has to be our aim. But then at the same time, we need to understand time, what yes. their, their relationship But at the same be. time, we've got to make those links for ourselves. No, we don't necessarily need to look through a particular person with a turban on his head. Insights fear, insights fear in our hearts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, no. Those. So when you, think, so I think those people have had their day. Those people, their time's up now. You know, it's a new day. It's a new time, and there's a new spirit moving, a natural mystic, as it were, moving in the air. And I'd like to thank Brother Simon. It's um, a pleasure as always. A pleasure as well. Thank you so much because I always learn so much from you. It's so much of insight, insightful information. Subhanallah. And I hope that you two have learned something, dear viewer. I hope that you've learned. Um, you know that at the end of the day that it's about thinking for yourself looking for yourself reading for yourself and studying this beautiful way of life called Al-Islam please subscribe um, to the station uh, email us at the station we we'll always want to hear your comments if we can improve the shows in any way then please feel free to let us know please keep watching please keep listening until we meet again I leave you in peace and love and I leave you with the Muslim holy words of peace from me Muhammad Solomon Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Wa alaykum as-salam. Peace.